What I'm about to show you is going to create a revolution in almost every type of humankind's presence in space. If you're one of the millions of people who want to visit space in the next few years, you should watch this video. Wow, that's quite a sales pitch. And for it, they've raised over a million dollars. And this video picked up half a million hits in a week or so. SpaceX, Starship, builds Vera Station in six months? Oh, in the comments, they love this guy. SpaceX Starship opens the door to do big things again. With this new big rocket will come the new big space construction machines to create the voluminous structures that we wanted long ago. Okay, so all of this is going to be reliant on Starship. Well, maybe we'll come back to that later. 2012, I started Gateway. Ha, huh, 2012, so he's, he's been going at this for over a decade now. He must have some really impressive stuff to show us. And in 2014, I designed and patented the first large scale space construction machine that could build large structures using an assembly line method. That's not actually a machine. That's a piece of computer generated graphics. And we're not talking particularly fancy computer generated graphics either. In 1993, there was a series called Babylon 5. The Babylon Project was a dream given form. The Babylon Project was our last best hope for peace. It failed. Which was, at its time, cutting edge computer graphics, which yeah, are now somewhat criticized for its um, computer graphics. And through some fluff, it had some pretty decent story arcs. But in the year of the Shadow War, it became something greater. Our last best hope for victory. But the core of it was a giant uh, <clears throat> computer-generated space station that's a heck of a lot better well thought out than this. <laughs> Let alone the utterly half-baked version of how they were going to build this. Remember this guy who designed these amazing machines for making this in space? Well, let's see how they check out, shall we? Incidentally, we're going to play a game today called Acronym Bingo, or GeekCap for short. Anytime you hit this guy, make up another acronym, or MUA for short, you're going to have to take a shot. Or maybe, just so I don't get convicted for multiple homicide, you can just share the video for laughs. So the very first thing that we get is some delivery or something, but you'll notice that there are no reaction control thrusters on this thing, which means it w it can't stop itself. How is it stopping? Okay, fine. So the delivery mechanism doesn't obey the laws of physics, but now they've got this great machine that's going to turn that delivery into a space station. I mean, just look at this. It's going to roll all the pieces automatically into position, and then it's just going to weld it using, um, well, there must be a power source on this somewhere, but there aren't any batteries and there aren't any solar panels. How is this going to weld anything? Okay, but fine. Now it's going to make these little trusses, which is going to assemble using <laughs> Tesla bots into um, a, a, a mesh type structure. And it's like, hang, hang on. How is this? This is meant to turn into a circular spinny thing. Uh, no. Let's see. Andrew, the astronaut, wants to go on a stainless space station where he can have artificial gravity because it's spinning nicely. And maybe there can be another inner floor, something like that, where another astronaut can actually walk around and get some level of artificial gravity. What would be really stupid if you constructed this using a metal grid like this, where there are metal bars going absolutely everywhere through all of the floors all over the place? You know, that would be really stupid. Let's see. As Andrew the astronaut walks around this way, he trips over this bar and this bar and this one knocks into his head. Or when this guy is going around, this one knocks into his head and then he trips over this one, and this one's at waist height, and so forth. But nothing can quite prepare you for what's going to happen in the center of this ring, where they're gonna dock the spacecraft. Now in the center of the ring, of course, you have no artificial gravity at all. And as you come out, well, it's sort of centrifugal in nature. So as you get off the space shuttle, gravity will work in this direction. 
apart from not in artificial reality world where this guy's space station exists. Uh, people uh, walk off the space shuttle like this, where in reality, they would just kind of fall out of it. I mean, here, let me fix that for you. Now disembarking from flight 742 at gate A. John Blimco and Tom Spilker of the Gateway Foundation. He graduated with a BA from Cal State San Bernardino in 1996. Wow, he's got a degree, good on him. Must be in something pretty math heavy, you know, engineering, aerospace, physics, and Chinese imperial dynasties. Ah, uh ha. -huh. Well, maybe he reskilled after that. And no, he went from that onto flying planes. Uh, first, we have John Blinko, who worked as a pilot for 24 years, flying all over the world in aircraft, including the Boeing 757, the 747, and the, D the DC-10. He also has extensive experience as a pilot instructor for United Airlines and Boeing Flight Safety, and as a security instructor for the TSA. And it's those great TSA skills that have now allowed this awesome mind to create spaceship building machines that don't obey Newtonian orbital motion require no power to function, and don't so much run on artificial gravity, but alternative artificial gravity. For almost a decade, I have been designing space construction machines, spaceports, and drones to help form a space construction industry. Wow, impressive. He must have a huge army working for him, some giant facility to do all of that. Over to the common sense skeptic, who busted a lot of this stuff the last time it went viral. Better Business Bureau, which matches the address on their website, you would probably expect that it would be a large industrial complex or an airplane hangar given John's piloting experience, somewhere big enough that they could be developing all the tech they say they require to construct gigantic rotating space stations in orbit. What you wouldn't expect it to be is what it actually is. A P.O. box in a strip mall UPS store in Rancho Cucamonga, California. Nope, not even kidding. Now I have designed four new space construction machine product lines. Number one, a torus builder. Number two, a large scale station interior builder. Number three, an off-world spacecraft builder. And number four, a large module builder. All of these new machines are based around a new type of space construction technology, panel construction. What I'm about to show you is going to create a revolution in almost every type of humankind's presence in space. If you're one of the millions of people who want to visit space in the next few years, you should watch this video. Are you like a crazy person? To tell you that there is a plan, a very good plan, with extensive details of how to build this- Is this a piece of your brain? <laughs> amazing structure, how long it will take, and how to pay for it. Now it's got to be said that this guy's got cargo cult written all over him. Cargo cults were these fascinating tribes on barely populated Pacific islands, and when the war swung through, they found that people from the sky bought them amazing things that transformed their quality of life, and of course, later they all left again. And then developed these cargo cults, where they did the rituals of things like building airstrips and simulating air traffic control in the hope that this would bring more things from the sky. After all, it had worked when the visiting armies did it. Meanwhile, this guy seems to be of the firm belief that space agencies give everything acronyms. So if he gives enough acronyms to enough of his uh, fantasies, then maybe his P.O. box will become a space agency. And with that in mind, now comes the part of the video where you go drink every time he invents a bullshit acronym. This is Vera Station. Vera stands for Voluminous Environment Rotating Architecture. Drink! Okay, well, one drink's not so bad. This is why Sargon is the first of a new class of space construction machines that are called Continuous Volume Generators, CVGs. Drink! Okay, that's two. That's, that's starting to hit the spot called the Station Transfer Vehicle, or STV. Okay, drink, but isn't a Station Transfer Vehicle just something like, I don't know, a, a, a shuttle? The process of building a torus in this manner is called Rapid Sequential Circular Assembly, or as we say, RASCA. Drink, RASCA, that's like four. Uh, but is there any reason you don't just call it a torus builder? 
You know, wouldn't that be uh, simpler? Will be built concurrently using the G-Cell renamed Vistel for Veristation Trust assembly line for this project. That's too more for G-Cell and Vistel, was it? Oh, whatever. Vital to that orbital manufacturing role will be the big station transfer vehicles, or STVs. The big station transfer vehicles called STVs. Uh, what? In 2015, I created this video depicting the assembly of the Gateway Hub and the LGA. LGA, drink. In 721 days, and over a thousand days for the big MGA. MGA, that's another one. The outer ring. Back then, it was considered a very ambitious timeline. Well, this is interesting. Isn't it? Crazy, right? Now, I believe we could build the entire Gateway spaceport in a month. <laughs> like to Are you say real? It. Are you real? The docking hub's OCCs, which Don't are the station's kill. main control centers, an emergency reentry vehicle, or ERV. Multi it's kill. time to build a prototype G cell. In the space kill. industry, we call it Cedra. Monster kill. Kill. In the space industry, we call it Cedra. Yes, from a space industry run from a UPS store. And by the way, that is still the actual listed address for the uh, Gateway Foundation. And this great space agency has consisted of nothing other than this guy giving monologues from the exact same background since at least 2016. Hello everyone, my name is John Blinko. I'm president of the Gateway Foundation. You might have thought that a great space agency could have at least afforded a, an alternative background. Or at least, come on, at least clean your once every six or so years. After all, you've got the great prestige of the Gateway Foundation to think of. After seeing this video, we would like NASA and other aerospace engineers to tell us if they think the design is good. <laughs> the entire length of the access tube interior will have continuous floor to ceiling TV screens on both sides to allow guests to see outside the station in an unobstructed manner. It will seem as if our guests are walking through space on a narrow causeway. I mean, some of this stuff is really just so bizarre that it's amazing that this is the second or third time it's gone viral. There's a hotel in space. Well, for space hotel, it'll have gravity, full working kitchens, bars, and more. Proiectul ambițios este pus la cale de compania Orbital Assembly. It would have to have restaurants and stuff and other sort of oh, trappings gonna, of a It's going to have basketball, you could dunk. It's going to be great. Yeah, and you Orbit. On board, there will be a slew of amenities will circle the globe every 90 minutes. And raised well over a million dollars. Look, putting TV screens all over the walls so you can see what it looks like outside, well, fine. But you don't have to go to space to do that. You can do that on Earth, like loads of these VR rides do. But beyond that, LCDs of that size would be power hogs. I mean, ballpark numbers. These are sort of three meter across corridors, which means it's about 10 meters around the outside. Or they're 10 meter long corridors. You're looking at a hundred square meters surface area of LCDs, which is give or take a hundred ish, 50 odd inch screens, clocking in at about 10 kilowatts of power per corridor. Then of course, those panels need to be robust enough that, you know, people accidentally step on them, they don't break. And lastly, that's a hell of a lot of mass to take to orbit for a gimmick. But don't worry, they've got an alternative use for these screens. They're also going to display the arrows in case you're about to die. If a breach were to occur in the access tube when people are present, if a breach were to occur in the access tube when people are present, The screens would become running arrows directing people which way to go to exit that portion of the damaged access tube before it was sealed off. It would be too much weight if we had heavy doors that would seal off the access tube on either side of the coupling. Yeah, for some reason, coating all the walls with LCDs wasn't a problem. Putting an extra door in there, too much on weight concerns. After the station is operational, if a meteor strike occurs, self-inflating vacuum shelters in the access tubes will give people a place to wait for help to arrive or make repairs to the pressure hole. Now, when they did their original fundraising in 2021, Bill Cow was listed as the CEO of Orbital Assembly. Now, curiously, as of the making of this video, 
He's not listed as the CEO of Orbital Assembly. If I had to guess, something relating to what happened to the million dollars. And curiously, about the same time, uh, Bill Cow decided to rename his company. Now, our old videos will be removed and some will need to be remade. From now on, we will be called Gateway Spaceport. And if I had to guess what happened is they had a tiff and the guy made all the graphics for him, said he couldn't use them anymore. When we introduced you to Von Braun Station a few months ago, we told you how Tim Elatori and his team at Doman were behind the beautiful imagery we all enjoyed. So he had to set them all to private and make his own company with these even more giant boombastic ideas of how he's going to revolutionize space. Except those private videos can still be found because they've been embedded on previous websites. So a little sleuthing later, I deliver you the glorious stupidity of the old deleted gateway bullshit side by side with the proudly displayed new stupidity of the new gateway bullshit. But we'll come back to that shortly. Because in the meanwhile, it turns out that Orbital Assembly did actually do a real life demonstration of their technology. Orbital Assembly Corporation today had a very successful demonstration of our station truss assembly robot. We moved six tons of steel and built a football field like the truss in a record time. Set your expectations to, that's pathetic, and prepare to be disappointed. And we are going to space! <laughs> now you'll notice that he's quite clear here about how they're demonstrating their station construction robot. You know, a, a, a robot, a device devised to do the work of a man. Very successful demonstration of our station truss assembly robot. However, this is a rather unique robot in that this truss constructing robot looks an awful lot like just people putting a truss together. Only one, so maybe Tim, just explain to us like that whole process, like how's that gonna work in space? Like obviously what happens when you're not around? Like just give us a bit of the, uh, the overview of what they just saw. Yeah, absolutely. So as I was saying inside, there's one little piece that's not automated and that's the bolt driving. What? Every part of it wasn't automated. We're developing out the initial elements of Voyager Space Station, the advanced manufacturing technologies that we're using. And that's what just really gets me excited about this, is that we're enabling this, this automated assembly of new territory in space. Propellant depots, or of course, more Voyager. We're gonna run out of resources and things like that that we have on Earth, be able to leverage the things that we've learned here and the people that are here and then start applying them. It's like bringing a pop-up tent with you to the campsite and you just, you press a button, boom, you've got your pop-up tent just ready to go and your living space is, is there waiting for you. No, it's just a bunch of guys putting a super-sized IKEA flat pack furniture thing together. Doesn't anyone notice this? I feel like I'm taking crazy pills. Very successful demonstration of our station truss assembly robot. You've got nothing! Nothing! I mean, hell, this thing would barely be impressive on a regular construction site. You know, where a team of guys will regularly put trusses together on a daily basis and in a damn sight more impressive way than this. Good, which brings us on to this video and the uh, one man space company who is now asking for help. Not from engineers, of course, who could maybe help build it or, or work out engineering tolerances or how to launch it or something, but for people to make more computer generated images. Interior layouts are being developed for you to see. But for now, all I can show you is this five level interior floor plan of the station with the hole removed. Wow, just look how much intricate detail has gone into this uh, window. If anyone with skills in creating interior station images would like to donate their time by helping us depict what being inside Vera Station would be like, please use the link provided here. And for those who missed the subtlety at the point, he doesn't want to actually employ someone to do the uh, highly sophisticated, highly skilled work of designing the interior of a space station. He wants you to do it for free. Cause that's what real multi-million dollar revolutionary space companies do. Or as we in the uh, space industry say, uh, cut wins disco. Well, whatever. If it all goes sideways, maybe he can ask the Babylon 5 team to give him a bit of help. But naturally, his uh, machine for building this stuff also lacks a power source, like solar panels or something. Vera Station and the machines that will build it is why all of the videos I've made before have been taken down. I believe this new way of creating large stations, large modules and spaceports will become the dominant method of space construction. 
Some videos will be remade with our new name and logo, but all the timelines of construction and development that were estimated in years are now estimated in months. This new technology changes everything. But apparently this time he's put batteries on it. Mr. Musk, this space station can only be built with your rockets and those big batteries, they could be made by Tesla. Let's get together and talk about that. Of course, you'd have to charge those batteries somewhere. So again, where are the solar panels? But Sargon is not an evolved trust builder. This machine is revolutionary. It represents a quantum leap in the field of space construction. The implications of its development are stunning. Honestly, I think it was just so we could name drop Elon Musk into this. And those big batteries, they could be made by Tesla. Let's get together and talk about that. Maybe not realizing that Tesla don't actually make their own batteries. Panasonic make them for them. He also pitches this to uh, Bezos, because why not? Mr. Bezos, this is your dream. We should meet and discuss this technology. And of course, because it's vaporware built on vaporware. He also says that Starship is going to be absolutely critical for all of this. I am convinced that we can deliver in time with a small group of dedicated starships. Over time, the construction team will develop a cadence that matches the available launch assets capabilities. But I don't think SpaceX is going to hold us back. They have designed and developed a lot of launch assets that can reload and relaunch a starship very quickly. Uh, no. This is not a space construction robot, and this is not a rocket that can be rapidly relaunched. Hell, it's kind of traditional that in order to be able to relaunch something, you have to at least have launched it once, and Starship currently can't even get to orbit. Now, the holy grail of rocketry, you know, forever, has been to make something that is rapidly reusable and cheap. Something that was tried with the uh, space shuttle and failed. Then SpaceX tried it again with the Falcon 9, and 10 years later, they had had little more success than the shuttle. Hell, even by their own standards, the booster of the Falcon 9 really isn't reusable. Don't take it up with me. Take it up with the CEO of SpaceX. And so looking forward, reusability, we don't believe it really, really counts unless you can turn it around as rapidly or almost as rapidly as you turn around an aircraft. Um, you don't... You, you, basically, you land, the, you land the system, you land the stage, you do some brief but important critical checks and inspections, you refuel and you reco. So our challenge right now is to refly a rocket within, within 24 hours. So that's, uh, that's when we'll really feel like we got the reusability piece right. Now, SpaceX has just made all the promises they made for the Falcon 9 10 or so years ago for Starship. You know, on the basis that people will have forgotten that they promised all of these things for the Falcon 9. And then just never delivered them. Even Elon Musk himself, in between promising how the Starship will change everything, seems to hedge his bets a little on this one. With Starship, we're aiming for full and rapid reusability. So, uh, you know, we obviously need to accomplish that. That's not uh, <laughs> done yet, but... Um, but, but the success is one of the possible outcomes. Yeah. Not necessarily. There's definitely a very slim chance we'll survive. Maybe something to do with one Raptor in seven blowing up if you believe tweets like this, where they say SpaceX is testing some seven Raptors per day with two blowing up in two days. That's a bit of a problem if you've got a booster with 30 or so engines on it. And just so we're clear, it's not just with the difficult things that SpaceX is having trouble here. You know that giant grain silo thing that he's standing in front of? Well, not terribly impressive, I know, it's just a big empty tube. But inside those, there are typically two fuel tanks, and the upper one has to get the propellant through the lower one to get to the engines. Where? So there's usually a tube of some sort that does that. Apart from with SpaceX's test of the booster, in a leaked picture, it shows that that tube has been crushed by the pressurization of the tank. Which basically means, yeah, again, this thing would have blown up had they actually tried to fly it. Yeah, so all rockets are basically the same. They're big, uh, empty metal tubes, basically flying grain silos. Um, and on the bottom of that, you'll have some sort of plate, which is mounted 
a well in the case of the Starship booster, a gazillion engines. Um, and you've got to get the fuel and the oxidizer from this thing up here into the the engine. So you'll have at some point a big tube going through the middle of this, and then there's an absolute nightmare spaghetti plumbing at the bottom that you know separates the fuel and the oxidizer into the right tanks. So in one of these tanks there'll be fuel or oxidizer and in the other one there'll be the other component that you need. So what happened in this case is clearly there was more pressure in the lower tank than in the upper one and of course that's just like squeezing on an empty coke can which just crushes the crushes this pipe here and yeah that that's that's fatal so if you look at it in detail um what this thing looked like it's a straight tube and to make it more rigid they put ribs on it little metal ribs uh yeah so standard way of rigidifying tubes and if you take a look at it in detail you'll see that they're welded not welded welded not welded welded not welded I'm not quite sure what the deal with that is. It might just be a time-saving thing that, you know, you only have to do half the welds. It might be that the welds actually weaken things and they're a potential failure point. You know, bear in mind that if you do get a failure on one of these points, then you are going to be um, mixing fuel and propellant prior to them going into the engines and so, yeah, it's basically going to explode. So, um, yeah, there's a gazillion... I don't know why they welded it like that, but the bottom line is... Um, it was crashed. So after uh, afterwards, yeah, even with the ribs on, it it it's a complete mess. And the thing is that this isn't the sophisticated part of rocketry. The sophisticated part of rocketry is the engines, um, which apparently they're also having trouble with. But this is. Uh, yeah, I mean, this this really isn't something that you should be having trouble with. Uh, which, you know, if you're having trouble with the things you really, the simple stuff you really shouldn't be having trouble with, it doesn't bode well. So even if there were no other technical hurdles, there is zero chance that they could fly Starship at the moment. But maybe it's an interesting perspective that this guy here is 0% towards making his ideas a reality. What I'm about to show you is going to create a revolution in almost every type of humankind's presence in space. If you're one of the millions of people who want to visit space in the next few years, you should watch this video. Not that that stopped him getting huge amounts of media attention for it. Meanwhile, Musk is maybe generously 1% of the way towards actually getting something to Mars. And way less than that. One part in a thousand, one part in 10,000 towards making this happen. Then build up the base, starting obviously with one, one ship, then multiple ships, then start building out the city then making the city bigger, <laughs> even bigger. <laughs> and... and yeah, sure, I get it. Rome wasn't built in a day, but I'm pretty sure that even back then, if you had had people who were claiming they were gonna build Rome in a decade using super advanced manufacturing technology, and you came back a decade or so later and found all they'd done is make a few dirt bricks, well, you might just start questioning their grasp on reality. Because there comes a point when you just got to be realistic. This ain't some master plan of some big-brained genius, all funneled through some revolutionary disruptive technology. It's Theranos with rockets. And that's today's video. If you enjoyed it, why not drop a thumbs up or a tattoo, as we say in the disruptive technology world. And if you really enjoyed these revolutionary ideas that will transform the world forever, you can always support this channel on Patreon or stakop, as we say. And as always, thanks for watching. Whoa!